It's the Blues Rock Show with Pete Francis and Willie Witten. Welcome to the Blues Rock Show. I'm Pete Francis, joined by Willie Witten. And today we're going to get things kicked off with delaying albums. And Willie, I know recently you interviewed Walter Trout, and he said a very prominent artist that he talked to was planning on delaying their new album until they can tour again. And we're seeing this with a lot of artists delaying albums right now during the pandemic. So do you think that's a good idea to delay the release of an album right now? Um, two perspectives on this. For me as a fan, as a listener, I don't. I don't. And Walter was in agreement with that. Actually, it was Walter's comment in the first place, as you mentioned. Certainly from the consumer's end, there's been a lot of time we've been sitting in our homes, in our apartments. It's apartment work, grocery store, apartment work. You know, we're not doing a ton of stuff. Man, I think more than ever, if you have something new to share, I would be sharing it because there are certainly people I know who I speak to, friends. I've had friends tell me that they are running out of things to do. I find that a little bit hard to believe in modern America, reading a book, listen to an album. But that's why the album releases are important, even if you can't tour behind them. However, that's my perspective. I can see from a Walter Trout perspective, a man prolific as he is, he can release them and he has been releasing them almost every, pretty much every year. For other bands, maybe the album release is a little more important and they don't want to miss that window where they can tour behind it, sell a few vinyls at the show, get people excited from that live show experience and get them to make some purchases. So I can see that, but all in all, I think that's a bad idea. If you have an album, release it now. People would love something new in their lives. Yeah, Willie, why do people listen to music? Because it an, it's great. an escape, right? Exactly, yes. It's, an, it's a release for people. It kind of takes them away from their everyday lives and listening to music feels good. Yes. And especially during a time like this, when we've had pretty much the worst year that any of us have lived through, this is something that I think as a society, people need this music right now. And a lot of artists that I've talked to, and I've asked this very question, do you think delaying your album is a good idea or not? And a lot of them have put out their albums saying that they feel like it's important to get this music out there, that music is medicine. That's something that Devin Ullman told me when I asked him about it. He said, music is medicine and people need this right now. And that's something that I totally agree with. You know, the thing about delaying until touring can happen again, this situation is really fluid. We don't right. know when touring is going to be possible again. So delaying, how long is that going to be? Is it going to be one year? Is it going to be two years? Could it be three years? We have no idea. There's no vaccine right now. No one knows when this situation is going to be over. So delaying right now, I feel is just not the best decision. I am in 100% agreement. I understand the other viewpoint, but I don't agree with it. I agree with you. Also, I, I, I don't know if fans will, I certainly don't think fans will ever hold it against an artist that, no. they, that they withheld. But I do think that there's a little bit of the upside where looking back, because eventually there will be some semblance of normalcy. And five, 10 years down the road, I can take a look and say, ah, yeah, Walter Trout, Ordinary Madness. That was a pandemic album. And that can sink the hook deep in someone's memory. I just think, like you said, music is medicine. I guess Mr. Allman said that. And I agree with that. We're in agreement here. Yeah. So because of the pandemic and what we're going through, musicians have had to adjust and, and come up with kind of a different game plan. And one of the things that is kind of cropping up now is subscriptions, which I thought was really interesting. And going back to Joe Bonamassa's live pay-per-view, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago, if you had bought the VIP plan, it also gave you a subscription to watch any live DVD concert that he had. And right now on YouTube, you're seeing some artists bringing up this subscription model now where people can get a subscription, pay a monthly fee or whatnot, and then they get access to exclusive shows, exclusive performances. So as a consumer, do you like this, Willie? I do as a consumer. Uh, right from your example, I caught the Joe Bonamassa stream that we were talking about a couple weeks ago. As you said, uh, sitting around during the pandemic, I dug a little deeper. I checked out a uh, Greenwich Music Time 
spot of his where he played a ton of old cream. Uh, a lot of the classics, it was awesome. So I took a look and realized there's a lot here. So from a consumer, once again, I'd rather see him live. Of course, we Absolutely. all would. We all would. But I don't think it's a bad idea at all. And trying to envision the side of the artist, if you look, and we spoke about this, this as well with Spotify, your Spotify revenues, if you take a look what a click gets you on Spotify as an artist, it's not much. And album sales, vinyl, we spoke about that. They're up, but they're not what they used to be. So in a way, from the artist's perspective, I can see this maybe in some small sense slotting in that non-live revenue, where maybe in the future, if album sales aren't cutting it like they used to in the 60s, 70s, 80s, if Spotify is giving you some revenue, but really most of that's going to the big wigs, the big artists, the household names, maybe having some loyal fans and giving them a subscription that allows them access to everything, maybe that's how you sort of bridge that gap that's occurred between album sales, Spotify, and lack of live music. So I don't know how it's gonna play out in the future, but I think in general, it's a good idea. And I'm willing, Joe Bonamassa, I can think of a few artists that I would be willing to shell out a few bucks for to get access to a bunch of their catalog. Yeah, I thought what Joe was doing was really interesting that you have complete access to his entire catalog and he's got the infrastructure in place where he has that on his own website. So you don't have to go to YouTube or Spotify or whatnot. You get that on his website. So that's the question for me for a lot of artists. Can they build their own infrastructure where they have it on their own platform, on their own website? So basically they control everything. So then all the money is coming into them. Yes. Now, if they can find a way to set that up, I think that's great for all the artists. One of my only concerns about this subscription model though, is when you're constantly putting out performances, does that take anything away? The fact that you're constantly getting new music. Now, we talked about Willie in a previous episode that it's important to be constantly in front of your audience and engaging with your audience. But right. giving your audience new performances every single month or week or whatever it is, is that a good thing necessarily? I, I don't know. I mean, right now you've got ACDC hasn't put out an album in quite a long time, but now right. it looks like they're putting out a new album and people are super excited. Well, why are they super excited? Right. Because they haven't gotten a new album from them in quite a while. So I think there is a little bit of that factor of make people miss you. You know, so if they, I think yeah. if you're giving them too much, I don't know if that's necessarily a great thing, but I do like the subscription model where basically you have access to an artist's entire catalog, whether it's their CDs or their live show DVD performances. I think that is great. I agree. And I hadn't really thought about that, but you're right, because now that you mentioned it, Pete, I certainly feel it. Um, the anticipation it's key. Um, or the anticipation, once again, of going to the show. I've got this ticket. Five weeks from now, you call up your buddies like, hey, we're counting down the days. Some of that disappears. I don't know. I, I think there's perhaps a little bit too, um, there's a balance here. There's a balance. Yeah, definitely. And they've, I think sports had this. The NFL had this conundrum a while back and, and it, it evaporated quickly for them. But for, you know, it didn't happen often, but they used to have blackout games. And what that meant was, is if you don't sell out these live shows, if you don't sell out this, we're not going to have the local market be able to view. Now, I'm not saying that an artist is going to do that. But there's a, what I'm trying to say is, you are right. There's a danger of going too far. But I think the artists, and I don't know how this happens, but can try to gauge that level of, is this too much? Are we shifting too far into this subscription and not enough of a couple album vinyl sales here? We still need to go to the show when things get back to normal. I don't know, but I think it's doable. And I do like what you said, Pete, being able to go get, you know, you said old shows. 
I also, being the dork that I am, I love hearing some studio outtakes, different tracks, because some guys and some bands will release that too, and I find that to be fun. So, like so much of what we're doing now, the idea in itself is good. It's going to need some a, a lot of guidance and a lot of tweaking, I think. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to follow. Now, this summer, one of the most disappointing things about this summer was the fact that we didn't have any festivals, Willie, which for a lot of people is very disappointing because that's the highlight of a lot of people's summers, and we can understand why there weren't any festivals. But the question is, Willie, do you think there will be any festivals next summer? Um, wow. Having no sort of clue about real science and spread of virus or vaccinations, it's tough to say. I think I would lean towards yes. I think it's going to be different, but I could be wrong. Um, I think that even if they are allowed, even if people are gung ho, I think there are going to be certain groups of the population. I think a lot of it will be age based, uh, that will not find it quite as appealing to be coming and going. You know, you're not just finding a seat or finding your place in the arena. You are walking past people, getting food here, there dropping in at a bar or satellite clubs where people are also playing. The interchange of people at that point, I think some people are going to be scared. So they may exist, but I don't think they're going to be as prominent. Yeah, right now, Willie, honestly, I don't think it's looking too good as far as the possibility of festivals because now we're six months in and, and things aren't really getting much better. So the way things are going right now, it seems pretty doubtful that next summer there will be festivals. I think maybe we'll see more drive-in shows pop up and we'll have more of that sort of thing. But as far as full go festivals where there's thousands of people in multiple stages, yeah, I'm, I'm just not seeing that okay. right now. I think you could be right. Every time we seem to think we've turned the corner, we've turned the corner into another wall. So I think you could be right. What do you think about online festivals? Because I've seen a few of those pop up recently. Um, it's interesting because, you know, we're talking, we tend to think, or I shouldn't speak for you, but I think I'm going to here, is we tend to listen to a type of music that hasn't already dipped their toes into this idea. If you're a connoisseur of EDM, well, you already know some of this. So some of this has been occurring a little bit in other genres already, it hasn't happened as much in the rock and roll sphere. And I think that's because the festival experience that we know it, dropping into a band, going to another, that doesn't work. Whereas subscription-based and live stream shows for an artist or a small group of artists can work, it doesn't translate when you start thinking about how the festival really maintains its allure of an event, of a gathering. But I think, once again, this could be a shift in the industry. Certain genres will do better with it. I personally don't want to go to a Lollapalooza, a Coachella, a blues, Chicago Blues Fest online. I don't, because I don't think it will have what it was that I was going for when I used to be able to attend those. But at the same time, maybe this is yet another shift, Pete. I don't know. What do you think, Pete? I think it's better than nothing, but yeah, I'm not a huge fan, to be honest. I mean, why do you go to a festival? Right. It's because you're there, and you're there with a group of people all sharing and enjoying the same experience, and it's, it's the music, it's the weather. Usually, it's really nice weather in the summertime, and, and that's a big part of it. It's also the food, the drinks, all those yes. things that kind of come together and make a festival what it is, and an online festival, it's just straight up not the same experience. Right. Um, I, I think it's a hard translation. Uh, you know, someone held a concert in Fortnite. Um, I forgot who that was. I think in rock and roll and blues rock, I think it's a, it's a hard, hard sell. Maybe in other genres, they've already dipped their toes, but I really, for, it's not for me. I do like the subscriptions. I do like a live stream. Festival, I don't think that's replicable. I just don't. Yeah, better than nothing, but not great. Yes, yes. Right now, I think that's been a key theme in what we've discussed is better than nothing. And I think going back just for a second to the original topic, it ties in with that as well, too. 
I know you can't tour behind an album, but it's better than nothing. I know I'd rather get to see you live, but getting to see your music through a subscription, it's better than nothing. And the festival, hey, where's my, you know, big, ridiculous, giant beer and a hot dog to go along with it? Well, it's not there, but it's better than nothing. Better than nothing. Yeah, definitely. And we want to know what you guys think. So please leave your comments down in the comments section below. And please hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get all the latest videos. But for now, I'm Pete Francis. He's Willie Witten. This is the Blues Rock Show. We'll see you next time.